Today we're going to do a rear disc brake pad change on the 2014 Escape. Um, probably one of the easier cars to change the pads on, um, just the way it's designed and easy to get to. Uh, we're going to start out by taking the wheel off, and I want to give a quick tip. Uh, these Escapes have uh, chrome capped lug nuts on them, and a lot of people will use an impact wrench to drive them on. And if you do that, you'll beat the chrome cap up a little bit and the socket will not fit. So if you run into that situation where you have the right socket or your lug wrench and it won't fit, just beat it on with a hammer. It's about the only thing you're going to be able to do. And uh, that'll kind of reshape it. And once you back it off, you can put it in a vise and knock it out and it'll be okay. If not, you might have to replace it. Some of the tools you're going to need is a 7 millimeter Allen. Uh, we're going to use the socket kind just so I can use it on an air tool and make this process a little bit quicker. Um, I actually have had this socket set for quite a while now and I've been using it on impacts and uh, it's actually been holding up pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description on where you can buy this. It's really cheap and uh, if you have one of these in your toolbox it's going to make a lot of jobs a whole lot easier. The next thing you're going to need that uh, you might and might not have is you can't reset the caliper the old-fashioned way with a C-clamp. You need what is a, uh, a piston rewinder, and uh, you can also buy these pretty cheap. This entire kit, I think, was like $22 on Amazon. I'll find that, put a link in the description as well. You're going to need one of these. The nice thing about this kit is it does like 21 or 22 different types of cars. It'll pretty much cover anything you need to do unless it's something really odd or some foreign import maybe, but it did have a lot of imports on there as well. You're going to need a new set of pads. Uh, I like to go middle of the road on those. I don't like to buy the really high end because I think sometimes they squeak and I don't like to buy the cheap because I think they wear out. Um, as far as other tools, um, I like a little dog dish there to hold some of the uh, parts and pieces I'm going to pull off. I had a punch because as you can see I had one of the lug nuts stuck and I had to beat it out. Um, and again, that's just common with these cars. They swell sometimes, uh, but the majority of the issues are people use an impact to put these lugs on. It beats them up a little bit and you can't get a socket back on or off of them. Might need a hammer. I highly doubt it. Again, the only reason the hammer is laying here was so I could beat the um, so or the uh, lug nuts out of the socket. Uh, you will need something to pry on, uh, possibly a long screwdriver, which is what we're going to use today. And you'll need some type of grease. It really doesn't matter what kind of grease. I just buy a general all-purpose grease. So let's go ahead and get started. So the way these are designed are pretty simple. There's basically the slide pins, which are here, and they have a, a press cap on them, which you can pull off typically with your fingers. This one's a little tighter. It's just a dust cover. And you're going to use your Allen wrench down inside this hole because the slide is threaded and it has an Allen, Allen top. It's a 7 millimeter Allen. And you're going to unbolt this one. And you'll unbolt the other holder down here on the bottom. And this whole shoe will rock off. And uh, we'll do that here in a second. But you want to be careful that you don't tug on any of the brake lines because these brake lines, this car is pretty new. They're not very brittle, but uh, still you want to be careful not to pull on them or kink or bend them. And the older these get, the more brittle they are. Uh, so just be careful not to, not to torque on the lines too bad. So let's go ahead and get that off. So I went ahead and packed out one of these slides, but I just want to show you the top. It's just an Allen is all it is, seven millimeter. And uh, that's what holds this bracket on. So you pull both these out and this thing should fall right off. After you get those slides out, or maybe even before, you want to pop this little spring retainer off. That's what you're going to need the screwdriver for. It's pretty simple. You just put a screwdriver down in there and you just pry the clip off and it'll, it'll pop right out of there. Not a big deal. Of course, this one's going to make it a big deal. But as you can see, you just kind of pop it out and do the same with the bottom down here. And then just put this clip aside. Now, if you're lucky, you'll be able to pull this shoe holder off with your hands. And if not, just stick a, a screwdriver down in here and, and, and pry it back and it'll come off. I think we're going to get lucky here. Nope, we might have to use a screwdriver. We're just going to take a screwdriver in there and just kind of gently tug on it. And now it's off. And now we're going to pull the brake pads off and we're going to reset the caliper. The pads just lay in there. So once you pull that shoe holder off, they just come right out like this. And uh, you just pull them out of there set them aside. You can see we had a little bit of meat left, but uh, we needed to replace these pads. They was getting pretty worn. So in your kit, you're going to see a left hand thread and a right hand thread. And try not to get these mixed up. It is kind of common sense because the uh, left hand thread basically means left hand takes it off or backs it out. And that's the one we need for a Ford. Uh, so we're going to use this guy here. And then I looked up in the instructions and it said we needed the M adapter for a Ford of this era. So that's what we're going to use. 
and then we need this back plate uh, to hold it in place. So we'll show you how all this gets put together. You can see the adapter plate that was M for Ford. Huh, you would have thought they would have used F, but they did not. Uh, then this is part of the tool and the, and the part that tightens it. And then this is that plate that I was telling you you're going to need. And then once you slip it in there, you kind of back this up till it snugs up a little bit. You could tighten it down with a wrench, but I found you don't really need to. And then you just start turning this clockwise until she resets. And now it's just a matter of sitting the pads back in the holder. So the one with the spring goes on the inside, in case you forgot that. The one with the tab goes on the outside. Then we just take our bracket and we put right over the top, like so. And we put our bolts in, or our slides. Remember, one went on top, one went down below. We'll put the slides back in. We'll just snug them up a little bit. After that, you'll be ready to put your spring retainer back on and put your wheel on and you're set to go. One final tip is you'll want to grease your slides up really well. Uh, I like to even put some grease around the threads just to keep them from rusting. Uh, if you wanted to, you could even use some anti-seize. Uh, it's a pretty cool product by Permatex and it will keep bolts and things from rusting together. So you could definitely put some of this on the threads. That would help a little bit. I'll also put a link to this down below so you can find it. Finally, don't forget to put your dust caps back on. That keeps the dust from getting down in those slides. Those slides are really important. Uh, they need to be free and they need to be greased up. After you get the wheels on and the lug nuts tightened out, you want to get back in your car and keep it in park, and start it up, and press the brake pedal a few times to reset those calipers. Once they snug up, you'll feel it in the pedal, take it for a test drive, and make sure everything's okay. And of course, after you drive your car for a little bit, you'll want to come back and retorque your lug nuts. And there you have it. It's a pretty easy uh, job to do, pretty inexpensive, especially if you do it yourself. I think you have about $30 or $40 in your brake job, not including any tools you might need if you don't already have them.